This is an area of great interest to ourselves as well as our colleagues in Amsterdam and many other research groups around the world. So we've been trying for many, many years to identify a, an agent, a medical agent, which could be effective at preventing the progression of abdominal aortic aneurysm disease. That could be for both patients with early aortic aneurysm disease and perhaps patients after they've been treated with endovascular grafting to reduce the need for secondary interventions. Uh, based on our interest in this problem over a several year time period, a few years ago we identified metformin as a possibly effective agent in preventing progression of aortic aneurysm disease, first in a small cohort of patients at Stanford University and then more recently by looking at the entire uh, U.S. Uh, Department of Veterans Affairs uh, patient uh, data set, which includes over 250,000 patients with abdominal aortic aneurysm disease, of whom about 77,000 also have diabetes. So in, since we made that initial observation, this finding has been confirmed in several different populations worldwide. And we've gotten to the point now where we need to know more about exactly in what circumstances does it work, and most importantly, how does it work exactly. So metformin is one of the anti-diabetic drugs that had effects on many uh, cardiovascular diseases and including aneurysms because we think it's uh, anti-inflammatory and it works on um, cell proliferation as well. And in our research that we do on cell-specific analysis on patient cells itself, we see actually that it's activating the inflammasome, so it has an anti-inflammatory effect and it um, also stimulates cell proliferation um, and it is dose-dependent. So the evidence to date has all been retrospective from large patient series, all unfortunately in patients who also have diabetes. And there's other evidence, uh, a great amount of it actually, suggesting that diabetes itself also limits aortic aneurysm progression. So the $64,000 question, if you want to call it that, is does metformin uh, impede aneurysm progression or have some anti-aneurysmal effect in the absence of diabetes? And that's where uh, clinical trial is going to be necessary. And so uh, we have uh, submitted uh, for a clinical trial sponsored by the National Institutes of Health here in the United States. Colleagues in Austria, Sweden, and Australia have either all uh, proposed trials or have initiated trials, uh, basically looking at a similar endpoint, which is how does the metformin treatment in non-diabetic patients uh, prevent uh, progression of aortic aneurysm disease, mostly as uh, determined by diameter enlargement. And, you know, there's also questions about safety and tolerability in the use of metformin in non-diabetic non patients, and presumably these trials will answer those questions as well. I agree with what Dr. Dolman says is that right now it's only cohort studies and in diabetes patients and we do know that also in these cohort studies that if you have diabetes itself, uh, you also have uh, less incidence of uh, aortic aneurysms. And um, insulin and hyperglycemia also affects the vascular status and has an anti-inflammatory effect. So it's not only metformin. So what we can do in our uh, research is that actually that patients who do not have diabetes and have an aneurysm, we do in our cells see also effect of the metformin. So metformin does have an effect in patients uh, within uh, aortic aneurysms without diabetes as well. So I do believe that the clinical trial will uh, give us the answers, but in our cell-specific analysis we see that as well uh, already. The value of metformin in a clinical uh, perspective is going to depend largely on the tolerance, as I mentioned, in non-diabetic patients, and as well on the effect size. So does it, you know, the, the retrospective or cohort studies that uh, Dr. Young referred to suggest an effect size of somewhere between a 30 and 75 percent rate of reduction in progression of aortic aneurysm disease. And we had done some previous work with uh, a drug company, Novartis, to try to figure out at what level of suppression would it have some clinical value. And we decided a minimum amount would probably be 30% rate of reduction. If it's lower than that, it's probably not going to really add much to the clinical armamentarium for patients, you know. So if, in fact, it is effective at that level or more, then it would 
as I mentioned, present a treatment alternative, perhaps for patients who are older and at higher surgical risk or who have had uh, already an endovascular graft placed and they were concerned about the need for secondary interventions. There's a number of kind of secondary treatments. This is not going to displace surgery as the primary treatment for large aneurysms, but as you know, in many societies around the world, there are screening programs now for aortic aneurysm disease. You know, 90% of patients identified at screening have small aneurysms, which are below the threshold for surgical intervention. Those patients will then often ask, you know, well, what do I do now? And the answer typically is just come back every year, every six months for an ultrasound exam. And if there was an alternative where we knew there was a drug which could suppress aneurysm progression, that's going to significantly change the treatment options that we can offer some patients under those circumstances. The potential benefits of metformin are many, but I think particularly related to clinical management of aortic aneurysm disease, uh, retrospective reviews have shown that patients taking metformin are less likely to have abdominal aortic aneurysms. That's data from the Taiwanese National Healthcare System. Uh, if an aneurysm is already present, it appears to enlarge less rapidly, and then that's data from a number of different countries, uh, Australia, United States, Sweden, uh, Denmark, I think. Uh, and in some, some reviews suggest actually the risk of aortic aneurysm rupture is less in patients taking metformin, although that is not a consistent finding across the board. And finally, uh, two different series, one in New York and one in uh, Sweden, I think, from the Swede Vast National Registry, suggest that secondary interventions following EVAR are less, less frequent in patients taking metformin versus those who are not.